رب العالمين وافضل الصلاة وتم تسليم يا سيدنا محمد خاتم النبياء وامام المرسلين ولا اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا نويت تعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكير ونفع والانتفاع والافاده والاستفاده والخفاء على تمسكي بكتاب الله وبسنه رسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء الى الهدى ودلاله على الخير وابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى وبعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته so we finished the discussions on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ramadan and the ramadan of the companions radiyallahu anhum inshallah today what i want to address is i've been getting a lot of questions recently where people are getting thoughts in their minds ye khayalat logo ke zehn mein aate hain aur wo kehte hain ki kya isse guna hame milega ya nahi will we receive bad deeds for the thoughts that we have and literally what they are getting is what is what is called waswasa they are receiving the waswasa from the shayateen and now some of them they they having this complete breakdown wo bilkul haar jate hain kehte hain ke hamara deen chala gaya hai you know we have no religion left anymore we've left the folds of islam our nikahs are invalid so they have all these questions so i wanted to try and uh, speak on this today so inshallah the verse that we're going to be looking at today is the end verses of surah baqara surah baqara ki aakhri jo teen ayate hain bil khusus verse 284 and verse 286 so in fillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard and then la yukallifu allahu nafsan illa wus'aha ila al-akhir in until the end so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard to allah alone belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth ke allah tbaraka wa ta'ala ki milkiyat mein hai jo kuch zameen mein hai aur aasman mein bhi sirf aur sirf allah tbaraka wa ta'ala ki milkiyat mein hai so everything that you see around us nothing belongs to anybody else so when you have kings you have queens and they think that they own things that you need a passport to get from one land to another because this is our quote unquote kingdom you need a visa to enter our kingdom this is not your kingdom it is all only belonging to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nobody else whether you reveal or conceal your thoughts ke chahe aap baaton ko zahir karo ya usko chupao allah tbarak wa ta'ala tumse uska hisab zarur lega whatever is in your hearts whatever is in your minds whether you hide it or you reveal it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you to account for it. He forgives whom he wills. Jise wo chahta hai wo bakhsh deta hai. And whoever he wants to punish, he will punish that individual. And Allah is the ever determiner over every matter. Wo har shay par qadir hai. Now, nothing happens without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission. اللہ تبارک و تعالی کی اجازت کے بغیر ایک پتا بھی نہیں ہلتا ابراہیم علیہ السلام آپ کو آگ میں ڈال ڈال دیا جاتا ہے تو کیا ہوتا ہے آپ کو یہ نہیں کہ وہ سیدھا وہ آپ کے لیے ٹھنڈا ہو گیا تھا یہ جو آگ ہے ابراہیم علیہ السلام So once he is in there the fire burning affects of that fire the properties which cause to burn they are removed from it and it's mentioned ke us din koi bhi aag nahi jali us din mein jab se nabi ibrahim alaihi salam aap aag mein chale gaye to us din koi bhi aag kisi ghar mein nahi jali it lost every single fire lost its property to cause the burning effect So no bread was able to be made no cooking was able to be done on that day 
Whether it is a big thing, whether it is a small thing, it does not matter whether it is trivial or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of everything. So when we think that we are going to sin, the ulama say, that the, 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 the ulama, they look at this and they say, Ke agar aapko koi guna karna hai. if you want to do a sin, to jake us jaga pe karo, jaha Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala aapko dek nahi sakta, ya usse usko jake aapki khabar nahi milegi. Go and commit your sin in that place where Allah cannot see you and he will not be able to um, receive the information of your act. Tell me, aisi koi jaga hai? There is no such place where you can go and hide from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is precisely why the ulama say this is the best advice to give to people. This is the best advice. Because no matter where you are, it may be the case that people are not around you. People are not around you, but Allah is there. And if you are those people who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it may be the case that, you know, a... You submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then some non-Muslims might bring a false claim against you, an allegation against you. But just because you're in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through you being in the house, He protects you. Why? Because now you are in the place of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And had you not been in the place of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you may have been in serious trouble. You understand? Yeah? So it's from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you submit to him, he will always find a means for you to come out of any trouble that comes your way. And this is what happened with Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. I'm not going on for tangent. This is what happened with Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was in the fire, but he submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala found a way out for him. Gave him that way out. O oh fire, do not burn my khalid. Do not burn my friend. Nothing can be kept for a secret from him. And this is why the verse I always recite from Surah Mulk. This is why that Bil Ghaib, where you are in the place where nobody can see you, when you are on your own, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that moment too. Jab ab akele hote hai, tab bhi Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ka taqwa rakho. How will you hide from him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Taha, Surah 20 of the Quran, verse 7, he says, Ya'lamu sirra wa akhfa. Ya'lamu sirra wa akhfa. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows what is secret. Jo raaz ki baat hai, jo aap aista sochte ho, Beshak Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala usko janta hai. Lekin fakat ye nahi, not just this. He doesn't just know what is secret, but he said, jo usse bhi ziyada poshida baate hai, wo bhi Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala usko janta hai. So what is even more concealed than those, those secret uh, words, Allah subhanahu wa Ta'ala is aware of even that. Jab ye aya nazil hui, Sahaba radiallahu anhum wo parishan hoge. The Sahaba, they became worried because they are the first believers. They are the best of generations. So their iman, their certainty brought them to the position where they thought, how can we deal with this? Ki ye jo umur aye hain, roza rakhna, namaz parna, jihad karna, ye sab jo hai, hum inshallah wo zaroor karenge. We will do all of those actions. No, the, the jihad, the fighting, the, uh, the fasting, the prayer, all of this, the zakat, we will do all of this if Allah wills. But how can we deal with our thoughts? Jo zain mein aata hai, isse muqabla hum kaise kare? How can we deal with this? It may be the case that a thought enters our minds. Aisi koi baat humare zain mein aaye jaye, that we didn't mean to think. What do we do in this circumstance? Because it's going to make our good deeds lower. 
तो ये परेशानी थी उनको दे वो वरीड अबाउट दिस सैदना इबन उमर रदी अल्लाह he when he heard this verse he began to cry say now ibn umar radiyallahu anhu ma wo rone lage is ayat ko sunke how can we be taken to account what are we going to do now completely in this state of despair why because this is how they live their lives in the complete fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but now for us it's a matter of koi baat nahi allah tbaraka wa ta'ala rahim hai Allah maaf farma dega Allah maaf farma dega yeah this is good to have the hope of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa taala ki lekin kya sahaba nahi jante the Allah tbaraka wa taala ki rehmat ki unki maghfirat ki they did not know about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa taala but they even the in this constant state of fear of Allah subhanahu wa taala checking themselves at each moment in the collection of Imam Ahmad is mentioned When they heard this verse, the Sahaba they came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they fell to their knees. वो गुतनों पर वो गिर पड़े, and they began to say, "We were asked about the good deeds which we can bear, but what has been revealed now we cannot bear this. How do we come to terms with this?" The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't say that Allah tabarak wa taala ki rahmat ko talib ki ki talib ho jao. He didn't say go and look for the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He didn't start going through this, um, you know, in this day and age, people going through this whole, you know, goofy Sufi mode and saying, you know, don't worry, Aki, it'll be all good. Just focus on the best that you can, etc. No. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? He said, "Do you want to repeat what the people of the Scripture said? Jo ahlul kitab hai, kya uske ap unke tabe hona chahte hain? Jo unhone kaha." उनके जैसा करना चाहते हो कि हमने सुना लेकिन जो कुछ भी फरमाया है हम उस पर अमल नहीं करेंगे ये अहलुल किताब यहूदी और असाई द जूज एंड द क्रिस्टियन दिस इज वॉट दे सेट The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said instead lekin aap iman wale ho aap aisa kaho sami'na wa ata'na that we hear and we obey subhanallah ke hum sunte hain aur hum us umur ke tabe bhi hain we will not question it we hear and we obey and we seek for your forgiveness o oh, our lord and the return is to you ke ae allah hum teri bakhshish ke talib hain और हमें तेरी तरफ ही लौटना है जब मुसलमानों ने यह बात फरमाई वन द सहाबा वन दे सेट दीज वर्ड्स अल्लाह सुबहान हुआ था ही एब्रिगेटेड द वर्स ऑफ टू हंड्रेड एटी फोर आप अल्लाह तबारक व तला ने जब यह बात आपने फरमाई सहाबा इकराम ने जब आपने ये बात फरमाई तो अल्लाह तबारक व तला ने यह जो पिछली आयात है वर्स टू हंड्रेड एटी फोर सूरा बकरा की आपने इसको मनसूख फरमा दिया मुसलिमेशन abrogation is that one legal ruling is revealed right there's a there's a mention of a specific legal ruling ek hukm zahir hua hai jaise ke ayate hain khamar ki there are verses about alcohol within the quran which speaks about the good properties of the alcohol and that there are bad properties of alcohol as well लेकिन उसके बाद अल्लाह तबारक व ताल ने वो आयात नाजुल फरमाए जिन्होंने हमर को हराम करार कर दिया विच मेड अल्कोहल इंटॉक्सिकेशन प्रोहिबिटेड फॉर यू ना वो यू सी हेयर इज एन एब्रिगेशन नाउ द वर्स इज स्टिल ए पार्ट ऑफ द कुरान ये आयात जो है ये फिर भी कुरान का हिस्सा है वी नॉट से पार्ट ऑफ द कुरान एनी मोर दो वो यू आर से रूल 
the hukum, the legal ruling has changed to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has now revealed. And what you understand is that it was the case that Allah for that specific moment revealed that verse, but he in his knowledge, in his uh, divine encompassing knowledge, he already knew that this verse was going to be replaced with another verse. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ko pehle se hi pata tha ke ye jo pehli ayat hai ye fakat us waqt ke liye hi hai. Lekin uske baad isko mansoor kiya jayega dusri ayat ke saath. So it's not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not know and you must understand that. When this verse came forward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says la yukallifu Allahu nafsan ila akhir. We're not going to go through the Arabic because it's going to take too much time. But we'll recite in the salah inshallah. Depending when we finish. Allah does not burden any soul beyond its capacity. Allah does not burden any soul beyond its capacity. To its credit is what it earns and against it is what it commits. Ke Allah kisi shaks ko uski taqal se ziyada mukallif nahi karta. Jo us shaks ne ne kaam kiya usko uska nafa bhi milega or jo bhi usne bure kaam kiye usko uska nuksan bhi milega. So whether you do good or bad Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you to account for it. If you do good Allah will reward you for it. If you've done bad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you for it. But whatever circumstance you go through, no matter what happens, you are only going through that test which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you can bear. This burden is not greater than what you can bear. Because one of the reasons is, how do you know that you are able to bear what you are going through? How are you able to bear it? How do you know? Kaise pata chalta hai ke aap ko is baat ka ye jo imtihan aa raha hai aap ki taraf ke aap ko is ka taqat hai ya nahi? Kaise aap ko pata chalega? Agar aap ki taqat nahi hoti to aap us imtihan mein hote hi nahi. How do you know? If you were not able to bear that test, you would not be in that test. The fact that you are in that position in your life is there to show you that look, you are able to go through it. But this is a test for you. Ye imtiyan hai. Ke aap isko pass karenge ya nahi. Are you going to able to pass it or not? And how do you know if you are passing it or not? Agar aap pass ho rahe hai. Agar aap ko a grade mil rahi hai. To aap Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ke ankareeb a jayenge. Deen ke ankareeb a jayenge. If you are passing it with flying colors. Then you are going to be those people who are going towards the religion. Agar ab din ki taraf a rahe hain, to ye alamat hai ke ab kamyab ho rahe hain. But if you are going away from the religion through this test, is antiyan ke zariye ab din se dur ja rahe hain, to ye ab ki na kam na kamyabi ki ye alamat hai. This is a sign of you being unsuccessful. Ibn Abbas radiallahu an in his narration which comes from Imam Muslim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he continues that the Sahaba said our Lord do not condemn us if we forget or make a mistake our Lord do not burden us as you have burdened those before us do not put this burden upon us and do not take us to account do not take us to account if we forget or make a mistake Upon this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, jab sahaba ne kaha, Hamare rab, eh hamara rab, agar ham bool jayen, ya ham se koi galti ho jaye, to hamari gurfat na karna. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ne jawab diya, qad fa'alt. He said, qad fa'alt. Haan, mene aisa hi kar diya. I have indeed done that, I have answered your supplication. So if you have committed a sin, if you have done something in error, in error, make sure you seek repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you've done it in mistake, whether you've done it in forgetfulness, you will not be taken to account for it if you sincerely repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't matter what your sin is, even if you've intentionally gone and done it, even if you've intentionally gone and done it, do not lose 
in the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rectify yourself. Seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But do not be in this situation where you think it's fine whatever I've done. It's fine whatever I've done. It doesn't matter. Whatever I've done, I've done. Allah will forgive me. No. You need to be in that position where you completely break yourself down. And this is why when you are fasting and you forgetfully eaten something, your fast is not broken. Why? Because of this dua right here. The Sahaba made the dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Qad fa'alt, I have done that. They said, they continued, do not lay upon us a burden like that which you did lay on those before us. As indeed, the Jews and the Christians that came before them, they went through trials and tribulations. When they committed a sin, in the next morning, it will be written on their front door that this person has committed this sin. Imagine that now. Imagine that happened to us. The sin that you've done in the night time, the following next day, it will be written on your front door for everybody to see. Imagine there was a large bulletin board, you know, the one that flips around the digital ones, hung up outside here in the masjid, just outside there. And every time every single person does a sin, before you're walking into the masjid, there's a picture of you there and it says, he did this last night. He said this last night. How would you feel? It would be a matter of shame and we would all be scared. We would be fair. Why? We're not scared of Allah. You'd be scared of what people think. You're worried about what people are going to think about you. No one cares what people say. On the day of judgment, what I say would not be of any account. What you say, it will be of no account. What you should be caring about is the verdict of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if this bulletin board, this imaginary bulletin board will stop you from committing sin, then the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is having this written down against you, this should stop you from committing sin as well. And why is this? Why isn't it written on our doorstep? <laughs> Only because we are from the ummah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are not going through this in this day and age. <clears throat> Had it not been for him, we would have gone through the hardship as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this as well, he said, Qad fa'alt. I have answered your supplication. Our Lord, do not put on us a, a burden greater than we can bear. Qad fa'alt. And pardon us and forgive us and have mercy on us. You are our Lord and Master. So help us against the disbelieving people. Qad fa'alt. The Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Pa minikardiya. So these du'as, read them in your own time, in more detail, in the, you know, go back, revisit it. What is being said and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is answering. So when you have these thoughts coming in your mind, just remember one thing, that you will not be taken to account for what is in your mind. In the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu which can be found in the collection of Imam Muslim, that when somebody thinks of a bad action, you make an intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the malaika, ki isko mat likna. Do not write it down. Hold the pen because it may be the case that he does not commit this bad action. But if you make the intention, you make the intention to do something good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels, isko likto. Write it down. So just by you making this you know, business plan in your mind that I'm going to do this good action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he writes down, he causes the angels to write down this as a good deed for you. But when you go and do the good action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the malaika, iska das guna ajar iskoto. When you do the good action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the malaika, 
multiply this reward by 10. This is the love and the hikmah uh, of this ummah only because of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when you are having these thoughts in your mind, just know it is because of the waswasa of the Satan. Satan is coming to you and he is putting these thoughts in your mind. So when these thoughts are coming in your mind, do not let it take you away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mayus mat hona. Ye mat socho ke ab me kya karunga, me haar chuka hoon, mene koi, mene kufar kar diya hai. Don't think this. Don't go into the thought process. This is only from the Satan. As long as you do not utter it from your mouth, do not utter it from your mouth, then you will be safe. If you do not go and do the action with your hands and your feet or whatever, it will not be written against you. So have this in your mind that you are protected. And when these thoughts start coming in your mind, straight away, straight away, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'udhu billahi min shaytani rajeem. Allah, we seek refuge in you from the accursed Satan. And if you do this, keep doing this. And if it's still coming in your mind, start reciting loudly. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alham. Keep repeating this and the Satan will leave you alone. Because now he's going to think, ke main iske kareeb aa raha hoon, ke ye guna kare, lekin ye achhe amal kar raha hai, main isko chhod deta hoon. That I'm coming to him to make him do bad things, but instead he's doing good things, and I may as well just leave this guy alone. I don't want to be a cause for him to do good actions. And before we close, I will mention about the, uh, the point of this being abrogated. There is a difference of opinion of what it actually means, but I, I didn't go into that because that's a matter of tafsir and adars. It's not for a general a discussion because then it will go too um, intellectual in the points of uh, the, the usul of the Qur'an. So I just wanted to mention that in closing. So inshallah, um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the waswasa of the Satan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us same, safe from uh, the, uh, the attacks of Satan on our iman. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us upon the Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jama'ah.